Hi, I'm Joe. Thank you for watching this video. This video is from a series we're calling Stories from the Mouth of the Columbia River. We hope you enjoy this video and will like and subscribe. My, my most interesting, my most crazy story crossing the bar, <laughs> shrimping, again on a 72 foot shrimp trawler, fiberglass shrimp trawler. We were, and the weather come up, and everybody said, okay, you know, everybody stopped and started. We were fishing way up off the Washington coast, way up there. We started running home and getting ready to, you know, head home. We get just a few miles from the Columbia River, and the Coast Guard says the Columbia River bar is closed. Now, when they close the Columbia River bar, that means even freighters. Freighters oh, are. Wow, okay. Okay, nobody's crossing the bar. Nobody. It's closed. Weather condition. I mean, there's... 40 foot, 30, 40 foot swells on the bar, you know, breakers. And he went for it, which wasn't a good idea because <laughs> we got about a third of the way over the bar and I had a deckhand there, a fairly green guy, young guy, newer guy with us. And he walked down, he went in the galley and went to go out, the, there was a, there's a door from the galley, then there was a little space, like a little hallway, where you went up to the wheelhouse from there, and then there was a door that went down to the engine room. Then there was another door that opened up to the back deck, okay? He walked through that little space and opened up that door that went out to the back deck just to see what the weather was like out there. And right about that time, a massive wave busted over the stern, washed up that deck, Right, to, it was a wall of water because I was coming down the hallway from my bunk, <laughs> and all I seen was this guy come, you know, <laughs> ass over tea kettle back into the galley through a wall of water, came through that door. Galley had that much water on the floor of the galley, and because the engine room door was open, the water went down in the engine room, right on the engine, shorted the engine. To, to tap some of the electronics on the engine. In so these now big we're waves. on in the middle of Peacock Spit on a bar that we weren't supposed to be on. It's closed. <laughs> <laughs> we were getting now that we had a net over, washed the net over the side, and everything else that was on the deck, like boots and rain gear and buckets, everything was all gone. <laughs> there was nothing. It flushed the deck. And uh, we had a picking machine. One of the legs in the picking machine got broke. The hopper, one of the legs in the hopper was broke, it, you know. So the skipper calls the Coast Guard, and the Coast Guard goes, well, we can't do nothing for you. The bar was closed. What were you thinking? The Coast Guard wasn't going to come and help us. He goes, you watch. He told me, he goes, you stay up here and watch the wheel in case the Coast Guard calls and blah, blah, blah. I'm going to go down and get that engine started. Mm -hmm. He went down there and tried and tried and tried. And it wasn't getting any prettier up there in the wheelhouse. But we were getting close to that jetty. We were getting real close. To the North Jetty? Yes. And uh, he came up and he goes, I don't know what to do. I said, I had already said there was a little screw in the side of that Cummings motor. Cummings motor, the mechanic had been there a few times, and I, I was the engineer on the boat anyway. He said, this little, this little screw, not much bigger than a it number two pencil eraser. It's just turn if you ever have electronic problems, if you can get this motor started, you turn that little screw in and it bypasses all the electronics and it won't die again. Hmm. And then, then the captain I was with, I ain't gonna mention names because he's no longer with us, but doesn't matter. He goes, You don't know what you're talking about. I said, Well you go up in the wheelhouse and you answer to the Coast Guard because it wasn't me who, <laughs> who came across the bar where we weren't supposed to. I'll go down. I got the motor started. And we, you know, headed back offshore. We turned around, headed back offshore, just in time before we were going to end up on the spit. And then we got the net back on board, you know, got everything kind of straight on. And the guy was literally going to turn around and make another approach at it. <laughs> and the Coast Guard saw him from the tower and goes, what are you doing? <laughs> You know, don't you dare. So we stayed offshore. So the captain was deciding to uh, come at the 
entrance from a different angle? No, he just decided, well, that was, you know, we just, you know, I can do it a better, I can do it better. I don't know what he was thinking. Uh, how big uh, of a know? boat? Uh, that was a 75 foot okay. fiberglass shrimp boat. Good size. And we stayed offshore, but when we got to the dock in Owaco, there was, there was a, a group of officials <laughs> waiting for us. <laughs> and they just looked at him and go, where? <laughs> <laughs> we need to talk. And then he got sassy with him. Well, you've got to come out and help us. He said, we're risking our lives. The bar is closed. When, when we're not even letting freighters cross the bar, you think we're going to send a 32-foot lifeboat out after you? Yeah. You know, yeah, they're, they're, that's kind of their job. But it's not their job to die either for them. Yeah. It's, their, it's our job to use common sense, right? So... That was a pretty harrowing experience. It wasn't uh, something, it was scary. And, and the funny thing about that trip, because the weather was coming up, and we have two sets of doors on a shrimp boat on one side, and two sets of doors on the other side. There's big wooden doors, okay, that spread the net open. They sit in racks, they're called door racks. They come up on board and they sit in the rack. And normally we just put a rope around them and halfway tie them down, because the weather was, you know, predicted to be kind of funky. I put a chain binder across the deck from one side to the other and chain bound those doors. If I hadn't have done that, those doors would have been over the side too. We would have, we would have been in deep doo doo then. You know, if those would have went over, it would have been ugly. Huh. Don't know if we ever recovered from that. But yeah, it was uh, one of the great experiences on the Columbia <laughs> River Bar that I won't forget. <laughs> Do you think that the Columbia jetties have tamed the river? Yes, I, I can't imagine what crossing, going out on the ocean without those jetties would be like. I, the, the sailors that did it before those jetties, <laughs> there were some brave souls. Yeah. And a lot of them lost their lives doing it, mm -hmm. so there were some brave souls. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was, they didn't have the technology at the time, but yeah, but yes, I can't even, can't even fathom what crossing or going out in the ocean without those jetties would be like. Thank you for watching this video. We hope that it was uh, interesting to you. And if it sparked in any way, thoughts you may have about stories from your family or friends or anyone, we'd love for you to make connection with us. Go to our website at tamingthemouth.com and click on the contact button and we look forward to hearing from you.